So Adolphus, what got this piece started? The death of George Floyd, and I shouldn't even be saying that with a smile on my face. A friend of mine who is the librettist I worked with the most, Herbert Martin, who lives in Dayton, Ohio, within one week of the murder, sent me what he calls a requiem piece, a black requiem. I asked him, because he, hadn't, he just sent the thing, and I said, oh, Herb, do you want me to set this? And he said, would you please? And so for the past 18 months, I, I have worked on this piece. Over, and the first thing I had to do was uh, get the choral score ready, of course. Um, and uh, then I had to orchestrate it, and the rest is history. We're still wrestling with the orchestration. So when you first got the text, how did you, how did you get to work? Did you get to work the next day, and did you right away come up with some musical tidbits that later fell into place? How did it all begin? This piece would not exist if I had to start with the music from scratch. And because the text is big. And so I said, I'm going to take a piece that I wrote some years ago called Hercules. And I'll tell you about the his Hercules. Hercules was the chief, the chef of George Washington the most renowned chef in the entire original 13 colonies, who uh, looked for opportunities to escape, especially when George took him to Philadelphia. Because the rule was that if you're in Philadelphia for six weeks, I think, um, or maybe it was six months, uh, and you were a slave, you could be free. And George would always send Hercules back to uh, the plantation in Virginia so that he could uh, uh, be reinstated as a legitimate slave. And uh, eventually, uh, Hercules started planning a, an escape. And because, first of all, let me tell you, when he, when he was in Philadelphia, Hercules was a celebrity. He could walk down the streets on Sunday with in total regalia and people would buy leftovers from George Washington's fancy banquet. And um, so he was kind of an in, uh, entrepreneur. And when he was sent back, finally, uh, George sent him back to the plantation in Virginia. And he was mad at Hercules because he had heard rumors that Hercules wanted to escape. And... Uh, Hercules got so he punished him Hercules by putting him out in the field. Now here's the most renowned chef in the entire 13 colonies. We had ambassadors from other countries trying to steal him away or buy him away or something from George Washington. Finally when George put him out in the field he said that was enough. And when it was time for George Washington's birthday in February, he sent for Hercules out of the field to fix his fabulous banquet for his birthday. And Hercules was nowhere to be found. And no one ever saw him again. No one ever knew what happened to him, but he was no longer there. And there were all kinds of rumors that he had been um, ferried off to Europe, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I wrote this piece for a friend of mine, a conductor. His, he's celebrating his, his last year with, the, um, with, a, with an orchestra in Michigan. Uh, and, I, uh, he, and he wanted to do an old piece. And I said, hey, let me write you something new for free. No problem. Because he was one of my great benefactors. So I wrote a piece called Hercules. I got the score, this text from Herb. And I said, God, this is huge. What am I going to do? I can't write all music for all this thing. I got too much else to do, and it's too big a text. What if I took the music from Hercules? This is why the piece is so symphonic. Took it from Hercules and applied it to um, setting this text. So here we have the uh, a piece called A Knee on the Neck. And Hercules works perfectly for that. Uh, start, starting off with a raucous uh, beginning with in double meters and everything like that, trying to represent 
the, the cityscape of Minnesota. Uh, and uh, then I integrated the choral passages into that thing, and I eventually, in 18 months, got the thing written. So uh, that's how it came about, Peter. And uh, I was very, very thankful to hear, get a call from you one day saying that you'd be interested in premiering it because you not only have an orchestra, you also have a choir. And it calls for a really good choir, and all you have to do is find some good soloists. And that's how the piece came to be. You know, that's actually amazing because you'll probably be surprised that I know the story of Hercules. Do you? And, and it's an amazing story. Yes, it and is. It's, it's an amazing story how, how Washington treated him. Mm -hmm. it, when I learned that story, it completely made me re-examine everything I was taught about, uh, about Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, the lengths that he, that he went to to hold on to him right. rather than letting the law of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Uh, have him uh, have him be set free. Frankly, had he been set free, he may have chosen to continue working for Washington for good money. Uh huh. But no. But but Washington went to tremendous lengths to hold on to him. So it's amazing that you tell this story because it's the first time I'm I'm, I'm hearing yeah. that it was applied uh -huh. to that is the score to Hercules to, right to, there. To, to, right. To this piece. <laughs> so then to the text, you also actually added some things. Yes, because there's oh, yes, a because there's did. there's a poignant place where yes. you name Brianna Taylor, Taylor? And, and and George Floyd himself because right. that, that actually right. didn't appear in Herb's right. Herb's text. Right, and I just recently found out that when Emmett Till, this is one of the great stories in the West, the American tragedy, was was killed. Um, he was killed in 1955, and I said I was 14 in 1955. So, and that would have happened to me. Because I grew up in the north, and if I'd gone down south to where he went, and I saw a pretty lady, and I said, God, she's pretty, that would have happened to me. And um, so uh, the Emmett Till story always uh, has impacted on me, and that's why I said his name had to be included in a passage the choir sings Emmett Till, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. And uh, that's... That is in, in, in the text. The, uh, I added that, right. Mm -hmm. And when George Floyd was murdered, there was a moment where it seemed like this, this is a moment, may, maybe this will be some kind of an awakening. How did that play into your, your composition? Did you, did you feel that, and how do you feel about it now, two years later? I don't know. Uh, a kid, I, I'm worried about. I'm, I'm not. I'm not worried about it. It was a job that I wanted to do. I did it for my friend Herb. It was not a commission, and I, I sometimes griped to my wife Jen. And I said, "This is the most run of work I've done in years without a penny," and uh, that's that's just, that's just the way it happens. I sometimes, as I tell students. And, and when I go around talking to them, you, you must not write just for money. Sometimes you write, you write for the love of writing. And um, uh, this was a challenging project, and I feel why, uh, th that for some people it might make an impact. Uh, I do love the way that Herb ended the piece. Uh, he didn't end it in a bitter way. Uh, he, he ended it with a, a hymn of hope and I don't know if he meant it to be sung only if he was thinking only of African-Americans singing it or not I did not think like that I, I saw it as a unity hymn um, where it's really more like a folk song I think more, more of a 1960s folk song of together we shall abide um, and uh, I, I love that term and uh, the last words are, uh, we shall abide. And hopefully, of course, uh, we will abide in peace. And uh, that's what I'm hoping that it, will, that it will be. It will be a message of the realities that we're facing, the difficulties of our current status in um, America. I mean, the whole nation is having problems. And uh, with the hope that 
I, uh, that we shall, um, we'll make it. We're bound for the promised land. I was talking about it before. And the promised land has to be a peaceful, uh, prosperous United States. Remember, we're an experiment. This is the great historical experiment uh, that we'll, we'll find a way to, for all these people from every place in the nation, in the world, to get together and, and, and make a nation that works. And uh, that's, that, that's what this is about. Uh, and that the world observed that murder and how to get beyond that. So you mentioned this is not a commission. And I, I have to say, we're so tremendously grateful and I'm so humbled that we are having an opportunity to do this premiere of, uh, of, uh, of this work. It's, it's such an important moment in time. It's such an important piece of music. Um, and it ends on a hopeful note, which is, yeah. uh, which, which is wonderful because it, the, the audience can carry something, something away uh, with them positive, yes. uh, but, uh, but, but, but yet the struggle in a sense continues because the problem, the problem is not addressed <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's, it, 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 it's, it's not solved. Let's talk, talk about maybe a little bit the, 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 the music itself. So it started with Hercules, but then you must have had, I mean, you composed this hymn at the end and then there's a folk song in the middle and how did you, how did you put it all together? How, how did you get all these ideas going. Well, the text has a lot to do with that because, uh, you know, we hope for light, you know, for something like that. The, the, and um, the glory of light, when, when Herb s says that, of course, that opens up imagery. Actually, that's one thing I've noticed about myself ever since I started writing, and that is that uh, I came up as a singer uh, and uh, words have metaphorical, as soon as I hear a word, there's a musical metaphor. In the quietest part of the piece where, uh, come home, come home. Now, the crucial I th element I think we, we have to look at in the score is um, George Floyd's last words, which were, uh, mom, mom. And at a crucial spot in the piece, I have the entire choir cascading in on the word mama and holding that. And the soloist coming in on the word mama. And then I call in the score for absolute, and I mean absolute, don't even breathe, silence and motionless. Don't turn any page. Don't shift your head to look around or anything like that. Absolute stillness, because that is the moment of death. Uh, that was, to me, that's a crucial part. There's, there's a spot in there that's like a, um, an African-American spiritual, where the, the sopranos and the, uh, uh, are singing uh, come home, and the, the tenors and basses sing come home, and um, the, the, the uh, tenor and the baritone soloists are singing, have you ever seen a person with a knee on his neck? And later on, during the last turbulent moment before it goes into the quiet coda, um, the whole choir sings, I can't breathe. So there's a lot of current history and thought, some directly related to um, George Floyd, some related to other people who have been killed recently. The thing that made me really want to do it is that I was getting so tired of all these black people being killed. I was, I mean, recently just reminded that one officer shot 16 bullets, 16 bullets. In, 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 in a man to kill him. Another shoots seven bullets in the back while the, back, while the guy was moving away. Seven bullets. I, 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 this, this con, constant murder 
of African American men, especially, uh, hurts me. I mean that it makes me it reminds me that if I step out the door after this conversation is over, that I am now a target. All I have to do is step out of the door of my home. I immediately become a target by virtue of my skin color. If 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 my one of my career goals has been to make a contribution. I mean, I'm a composer. What can I do? I mean, I, I don't march, and nobody would recognize me if I did. I mean, you know, it's nothing like that. But what can an artist do? And, and I can speak on the issues and put it in my work and say, these are the triumphs of a people who've been beat up around this place for 400 years. These are the tragedies of the people who've been beat up for 400 years. Does anyone ever speak for them? I, 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 you know, I was trained as a classical composer and we hear about this symphony being written for this uh, prince and this string quartet being written for this archduke and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And whoever writes pieces that represent the, the existence of African Americans in the United States. So I said, ah, I'll take on that job. It doesn't bother me at all. And um, somebody's going to do it. We're all, every, every, every European composers have always celebrated their cultures and the higher ups in their culture, et cetera, et cetera. And so I decided, I remember when I was in high, when I was t in taking history class in college, you know, okay, Gregorian chants, the foundation of Western music, et cetera, et cetera. Well, and I said to myself, well, maybe spirituals are the foundation of, um, can be the foundation of our music. Another thing that you use in, uh, as, as part of the experience is some African drumming, no? Yes. At the very beginning. Yeah, well, that, that came out of the Hercules thing. And I, but it still ties in with this, this class of cultures that we have in America, you know? And so, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, oh, good. And it's, I, I, and, that, and it's slightly cool. aleatoric in nature yes. also. Yes. There's a little yeah. bit of chance of, as how it combines with the rest, rest right. of the music. Right, right, right. I, 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 I've always wanted to do that. I, uh, I've, I've used aleatoric stuff before. Uh, uh, for you people who don't know aleatoric, that means by chance, okay. And uh, the, the drummers come in and they're totally in a different meter from what the conductor is conducting and, the, and everything, eventually we drop them out. Uh, but I, I made a hint of, of, of a different culture by doing that. And we bring it back at the very, very end uh, just a reminder of where George Floyd came from. So, so what you were talking about, what you can do as a composer, I, it's incredibly important, and you have you have the platform in, in the context where so much of our population even completely denies to this day that any systemic racism exists mm -hmm. in in this country. Mm -hmm. For you to be able to step forward and say, "Look." I feel it, I live it, mm. and this is the music that comes from what, wh yes. how, I, how I feel it. Yeah. Uh, right. that's, that's, that's so important, what, yeah. you, what you just said. Yeah.